Welcome to Mrs. True Crime, and happy Black History Month! Today's video is an in-depth look into James Reese Europe, the dubbed Martin Luther King of music. It's a tale of empowerment and courage. If you are triggered by anything dealing with death, feel free to click off this video. Perhaps check out my gaming channel, Retail Me Games, for some lighthearted content. If not, I'm Nicole. Let's get started. Though not the first Broadway musical performed by African Americans, that title goes to 1903's In Dahomey, Shuffle Along changed how the world saw black performers, composers, and storytellers. It broke barriers with a sophisticated love story, treatment of black audiences, and its musical numbers. The lyrics of music were composed by UB Blake and Noble Sissel, who created syncopated rhythms and flashy dance numbers. It ran for 504 shows and was revived in 1933, 1952, and 2016. The score reflected the music of its time, of its people. It allowed a window into what jazz was, could be, and will become. The only thing missing from its success was Mr. Jazz King himself, Jim Reese Europe. Born to Henry and Lorraine Europe in Mobile, Alabama in the early 1880s, James Jim Reese Europe had an ear for music. His mother taught him the piano from an early age and would continue when the family moved to Washington, D.C. From there, she would expand Jim's musical knowledge, having the assistant conductor of the U.S. Marine Band teach him violin. Jim's sister described the wide-eyed boy as having a magnetic personality, picking up friends wherever he ventured. He was affectionate and kind, but also driven, so when his father died in 1899, he knew he had to make something more of himself. In the early 1900s, Jim's brother John traveled to New York City, and roughly a year later, Jim followed. New York was different than D.C., and not everyone was kind, but Jim made a name for himself early on, starting off his notable career as a pianist. He used his magnetic personality to conduct an orchestra and chorus a trip to Africa. It is unclear if a trip to Africa is the same assortment Jim performed with for Rodman Wanamaker in Atlantic City, New Jersey, but his performance sparked a growing relationship with the Wanamaker family and the continuous growth of his name. In 1905, he became a member of Ernest Hoggins Memphis Students, a theatrical production company that combined vocals and instrumentals. Two years later, he was recruited by Bob Cole and J. Rosamond Johnson as orchestra conductor for their all-black musical comedy, The Shoe Fly Regiment. He would continue to be an important figure in the theater community, conducting and composing for shows such as The Black Politician and The Red Moon. Yet it wasn't until the 1910s when Jim's life would change forever. Black musicians during this time didn't have stationary offices to be called for a gig, Instead, they would hand numbers to saloons or cafes, and Jim didn't appreciate the embarrassment that followed. So, he formed the Clef Club, located on West 53rd Street in Harlem, a combination of a concert hall, frat club, and musician hangout. The club created a symphony orchestra of approximately 125 members with the intent to promote to a wider audience, and they succeeded. Though Jim stated to close friend and composer Noble Sissel that he lost 10 years of his life teaching the boys, he booked them for Carnegie Hall on May 2, 1912. The orchestra received national and international praise, performing in New York, London, Paris, and yachts worldwide. Carnegie Hall adored the musicians so much, they returned return in 1913 and 1914. On a rise to success, Jim's romantic life was met with just as much passion. Jim participated in a steamy affair with DC entertainer Bessie Sims. Rumors spiraled that Bessie at one point shot Jim, but this has never been confirmed. Despite their known history, Jim married Willie M. Ingram Stark, a widow socialite, on January 5, 1913. Though he was married to Stark, he would continue to see Bessie until his death, fathering James Reese Europe Jr. with her. While enjoying the passion of his personal life, his music continued to thrive. 
The Clef Club collected over $100,000 annually, but Jim began to distance himself from the organization, developing a society orchestra in 1913. The Society Orchestra, also known as the Tempo Club, had the same basic principles as the Clef Club. They would later accompany ballroom dancers Vernon and Irene Castle in 1914. In a letter to Cecil, Irene called Jim a man of unusual talent and intellect, a rare musician, and a true patriot. Jim, along with fellow musician Ford Dabney, worked for the husband and wife and helped perfect the Foxtrot. According to Irene, it was Jim who suggested a slower tempo. The castles performed for the supper clubs in New York. This exposure allowed Jim to issue eight recordings from December 1913 to May 1914 through the Victor Record Company. In 1916, the United States was turning its tide in World War I, and the 15th National Guard Regiment was formed in Harlem. It is the best-known African-American unit in World War I, though most know them as the Hellfighters, and Jim Europe won it in. In 1916, Jim enlisted in the Army as a private, but was commissioned as lieutenant. In talking Cecil into joining with him, he said, I have been in New York for 16 years, and there has never been such an organization of Negro men that were bringing together all classes of men for a common good. And our race will never amount to anything, politically or economically, in New York or anywhere else unless there are strong organizations of men who stand for something in the community. With the renaming of the unit to the 369th Regiment of the U.S. Army, Colonel Hayward asked Jim to boost morale with a Hellfighters band. Knowing New York musicians may not want to leave their high-paying jobs, Hayward told Jim to get musicians by any means, and Jim did just that. With the assistance of Cecil, the band consisted of black and Puerto Rican musicians. Prior to his recruitment trip to Puerto Rico, Jim confided in Cecil that he'd gone to the doctor and was diagnosed with exothylamic goatier, which we know now as Graves' disease. It took him roughly a month to have the operation to remove the growth, and though the surgery was successful, it was unclear if he would have a full recovery. Nonetheless, Jim pushed forward with the Hellfighters Band and was met with enthusiasm and appreciation in every city and country they performed, especially France. The love for the band was so profound in France, they tried to duplicate it, but couldn't. Jim stated it was because his musicians played their music, black music. The band produced 11 recordings for a phonograph company in Brooklyn, one of which being On Patrol in No Man's Land. With the success of their recordings, the band led a parade up Fifth Avenue in Harlem in February 1919. Though the unit disbanded, Jim decided to keep the band together and go on an intensive tour. The tour would only consist of one and a half shows for Europe. On May 9, 1919, during intermission at Boston's Mechanics Hall, drummer Herbert Wright stabbed Jim in the neck. Wright felt that between him and another drummer, Stevie, who he remarks never does anything right, he was given the worst treatment by Jim. He was taken on a stretcher out the back of the concert hall. He told Cecil, who had chastised Wright for the stabbing, to get the band ready at 9 the next morning at the State House. Jim thought the wound wasn't serious and didn't want any charges pressed on Wright, saying repeatedly, I'll get along all right. But Jim's jugular vein had been severed, and before the operation could take place, he was dead. He was laid to rest soon after in Arlington National Cemetery. Music, dance, and theater has changed in a lot of ways since the 1900s, but according to Noble Sissel, Jim's dream was to have an all-black symphony orchestra. One could say he received his wish in his lifetime, but in this one, the one all-black orchestra that comes to mind is Orchestra Noir, formed in Atlanta, Georgia. But they're not alone. The Kim Banguist Symphony Orchestra in the Congo, founded in 1994, and the African American Philharmonic Orchestra in Atlanta, founded in 1988. Honorable mentions include Chinook Foundation, founded in 2015, that's formed with black and minorities in the UK and Europe, and Spinks Symphony Orchestra in Detroit, founded in 1996, that's an all black and Latino orchestra. Though his life was cut in the height of his career, Jim Europe influenced beyond his means for generations to come. I'm Mrs. True Crime, and remember to be kind, be loud, 
Beware. For more information about James Reese Europe, why not check out some of these awesome links? And if you like me saw on her today, why not drop a like and a comment? Maybe you subscribe while you're here? <laughs> I make new videos every Tuesday and Friday, and you don't want to miss what's in store.